Alrighty, welcome back. It's still TV3 New Day. For the last few weeks, we've been having conversations about equality and uh, the focus has been on women also taking up leadership roles and also speaking against gender-based violence and other discriminations against women in the country and also across the world. And today we're going to have an extensive conversation about that to see how we can bridge that gap and promote equality amongst women and everyone else. I mean, of course, we do understand that uh, some parts of our country still are very patriarchal and as a result it makes it very difficult for some women to take up some positions and also to attain um, you know the utmost uh, objective that they are here for and so in the studios today to help us with this conversation we have Mrs. Mary Nate, Greater Accra Regional Director of Shiraj and also Miss Mina Mensa is a director of Africa Office Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative. Good morning Good and morning. thank you for joining me um, this morning. I know that there are lots of laws. The 1992 constitution alone has provided some backing for equality, um, you know, and of course um, has stipulated uh, some laws that indicates that discrimination based on gender and age um, is wrong. But we're still here talking about equality amongst women. What have we not gotten right? Okay. Um, good morning to your list, uh, your viewers. Yeah. Because I know people are watching us. Mm -hmm. um, you see, it's one thing having a law. It's another thing um, being able to enjoy the benefits of that law. And that is what this is all about. Mm -hmm. um, I work for the Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative, and one of our goals is to ensure the practical realization of human rights in countries of the Commonwealth. Mm. And you know women's rights is a human right issue. Now, we have very beautiful laws. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, when it comes to the application of the law, there is a huge gap. Mm. And it's, it comes from our socialization, okay. mainly. Um, the way we've been trained, the way we've been raised, our cultural background so somebody might be as educated as um, you can uh, get and still behave in a certain manner because the person has been socialized to behave in that manner mm. and because of that the um, um, Netherlands embassy has a lot of work going on on women's issues so they supported us to try and educate people on the fact that yes the laws are there mm -hmm. but how many people are even aware of those laws and how many people even for those who are aware when those rights are abused do they even know where to go mm -hmm. and even that is one of the reasons why the laws are there but we are not seen the manifestation as we ought to see in terms of the benefits and in terms of people implementing the law and in terms of people, women, enjoying the law. Yeah. And that is what we, we have on the ground. I mean, you talked about socialization, and again, that goes back to our cultural settings mm -hmm. and the fact that we've largely grown up um, in a setting that's more patriarchal. And so that makes it very difficult, first of all, for women to even push further and also for the men to finally except that women can do much better than just being, um, you know, relegated to the background. Mrs. Marinati, tell me more about these cultural settings and how we are starting from the root and making sure that for those who are now coming up, we can educate them on some of these things so they are aware, especially of what the law says and also how far they can go as women. Well, thank you very much. Um, first and foremost, it's important for us to know that Ghana is within the global village. We are not an, an island and we are not isolated. We have signed on, on to several UN conventions, UN treaties, to ensure the realization and the protection of human rights, especially for women and children. Mm. And so it is important for us as a, a country to ensure that these rights are what's realized. But like we have just said, due to certain cultural reasons, the law, for instance, the 1992 Constitution, prescribes uh, dehumanizing and degrading cultural practices. Yeah. Yet, there are laws prohibiting, for instance, a slave uh, well, servitude, mm -hmm. which is called trocosi. However, in the interlands, we still see people practicing such things. And what we need is the community assertiveness. Mm. 
-hmm. The community must stand up. The community must make effort to report such perpetrators to the institutions and to the bodies which have been set up to ensure the protection and the realization of these rights. Again, we are saying that those of us who are educated within the cities, it is our responsibility, and just as uh, my colleague just mentioned, institutions like the NGO, the stakeholders, to go deep down, deep down to the communities to advocate and educate our young folks and our old folks within mm -hmm. the communities to, uh, you know, relegate these cultural setting, cultural practices to the background, especially mm -hmm. when it doesn't augur well for the upliftment and enhancement of the, the work of the uh, woman. Mm -hmm. It's also very, very important that we women, we become very assertive. Even women who are educated, like my sister said, sometimes because of the family background, the culture and the tradition, they, they are not able to assert themselves to come up. Institutions like Shrat, for instance, as this, it is a free institution. We don't take money. Hmm. Yes, but how Shrat, many people even know? That, that is it. We don't take money. We do our bit in do our public education. We are within almost 100 plus districts. Yet you realize that education is done and women due to their, you know, um, let me put it, their nature, mm -hmm. sometimes will not avail themselves to even participate in some of these things. But the work being done by uh, my colleague and even by Strad is to create the awareness for women to come out. It's very, very important for women to stick out their neck and report issues that concerns them to report human rights violations uh, within their community and even being perpetrated against them. Very, very important. That will bring out the cultural uh, uh, what, uh, dimension or mm. to bring out the shift that we are calling for. But does the system support us? Again, again, I'll go back to an interview I had with a lady who was raped twice. And she said that the first time she was scared to talk about it for fear of stigmatization. The second time she actually reported to Dofsu. She went to the police station as well. And the policeman said that, I'm sorry, but I don't see any signs of struggle. I don't see any torn clothes, no blood. And so how am I supposed to believe and fight through for you? And so as a result, that case became one of those and it wasn't followed through till the end and she's still living with the trauma of it as well so if we're even educating women that come out tell your story uh try and fight for positions and all that and the system doesn't support us where do we go from here and I, okay let me take this i think that um a journey of a thousand miles starts with one step I, a lot of civil society organizations have been doing this work mm. um Education has gone on a lot. I think it's about reinforcing what we've been saying over the years. Because you see, the security services, they are made up of human beings who have gone through a certain level of socialization. Mm. In our part of the world, there's nothing like marital rape. It's not in our laws. Mm. But there is marital rape. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the person is working with the law. The person needs to be trained um, to be able to identify certain things. To be able to say that, okay, I don't see torn clothes, I don't see blood, but what can I do to ensure that I investigate this mm. and let, get this woman some relief? And it comes with training because the person has been socialized in a certain manner. He's doing his work. He's just going straight to the point by the book. Mm. He has to see A, B, C, D. And so unless the person is trained, and I'm aware those who gives training to some or they're supposed to give training to all of the policemen who work in that department mm -hmm. unfortunately you know the police service also they, they they move people around and so if you go and meet an officer who has not had that kind of training or who has not grown out of his socialization mm -hmm. then you are in trouble because some of these things are more to do with the socialization the person's mindset than to do with somebody who has the capacity. Some people have actually been trained, they have the capacity, okay. but still are not able to go beyond their socialization to even support. And this is why such activities like what we are doing now are extremely important. Let's bring everybody on board. I always say that when we are talking about women's rights, it is not only about empowering the women, but it's also about socializing the men to support. Women, mm. we cannot do this 
by ourselves. At the end of the day, it's true some women abuse the rights of women, but the men are way ahead of us. And yeah. we are in a society made up of males and females. And so we need to socialize everybody to have a certain consciousness that there are certain things that the other half of humanity is going through which is not right. We have done it over the years, over and over and over. It doesn't change the fact that it is not right. So we need to make a conscious effort. And I think that in these times of COVID, it uh -huh. is even more important that, that we do that because everything is being relegated to the background, yeah. yet there's a lot of gender-based violence. There's a lot of um, things going on against women because, for example, if, for example, somebody falls sick in the family, it's still the woman who would have to take care of the, uh, the, the person. Mm. Secondly, these COVID laws, quite a number of the things um, affect women more than men. A lot of the laws call, uh, um, expect that certain things are done. For example, the wearing of no smart yeah. social distancing. Go to our markets. They don't exist. Mm. And it's mainly women who are there. So we need to make a conscious effort to be gender sensitive in some of the things that we do. If we don't make the effort, then things will happen. You go to the police station and it's business as usual. Yeah. Because you see, the person will get away with that. Mm -hmm. And somebody is vulnerable. The person has come, reported. The case has been thrown out. The person will not have that vim or that impetus mm -hmm. to go further to, to report so that he or she gets redressed. Hmm. So we need, um, we have done a lot. We have yeah. come a long way, but we need a lot more to be done, especially with the uh, duty bearers. Absolutely. It, it's really, really important that the duty bearers are engaged, educated, sensitized over and over and over and over again. So that when somebody comes, because a lot of people who are abused don't even know that I'm supposed to have evidence. Yeah. They do not know they it. They do not. Once exactly. somebody, you go beyond the extra mile of not just looking at the person's body, is, is their blood, um, has her clothes been torn, to just go beyond that mm -hmm. to ensure that the person gets some level of redress. So it needs a lot of education. My time is up, but I'm just going to steal a few seconds mm -hmm. and ask that the Affirmative Action Bill, does that really resolve the issue or do we still have a lot of work to do uh, in terms of our cultural practices and all that in order for us to achieve whatever it is that Affirmative Action Bill is meant to achieve? Well, I believe it will be a step in the right direction. The law in itself is necessary. It's mm -hmm. empowering. Once you know that there's something you can fall on, you can go to court and, you know, invoke that law is empowering. However, it's also important that women stick out. There are various laws, not just the affirmative. Their constitution, mm -hmm. Article 12, guarantees the right of the all. Mm. And it also gives the responsibility for all the executive, the legislature, the judiciary, all persons to ensure the respect for the rights of uh, women. Mm -hmm. And therefore, in as much the law will be, you know, fulfilling, it, with, with or without the law, we are saying that Women's rights are human rights Absolutely. and all must respect same. Okay, I, I believe that we'll have to continue this conversation another time so we can touch on the various aspects. Uh, we almost barely touched on the impact of COVID-19 on women, but we have to make way also for the press briefing today that will be talking about workplace preventive etiquette against COVID-19 and also uh, we'll be getting some updates on case counts and case management. As you all know, our numbers uh, have shot up again. And so in the studios, I've been speaking to Mrs. Mary Nati. She's a Great Accra Regional Director of Shiraz and also Miss Mina Mensa is the director of the Africa Office Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative. Thank you so much for your time.